And three says to prove this identity, prove that the tan of A plus B is equal to tan A plus tan B over one minus tan A tan B. So to do this proof, we have the tan of A plus B. And we know that the tan of A plus B is equal to sine over cos. So it's gonna be equal to the sine of A plus B divided by the cos of A plus B. That's what we're gonna have. But then what do we know? What do we know? We now know that sine A plus B, we know a formula for this. This is given by, the formula is given by sine A plus B is sine, let me write it here. This formula for sine A plus B is given by, give me some space. It's given by sine A cos B plus cos A sine B divided by the cos of A plus B is cos A cos B minus sine A sine B. That's that formula. All right, nice and easy. So now you may ask, so what are you going to do now, sir? What are you going to do? Yes, sir, what are you going to do? Well, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to divide through by cos A cos B. And you might say, why? I notice I have a one right here, so I need this part to be a one. So I'm going to divide you by cos A cos B. Why is this equal not moving? Come with me not equal. Not getting the equal to move, so let me put another equal here. Yeah, man. So I'm gonna divide through by cos A cos B. I'm going to divide each term. So now I'm going to divide both the numerator and the denominator by cos A cos B. So I'm dividing the numerator, the denominator by cos A cos B. I know it looks like a minus, but it is a divide. So now, when I do the division, sine A cos B over cos A cos B, sine A, let me write it out, we will see it better. We're going to get sine A cos B, that part is divided by cos A cos B, Then we have a minus then we have a plus this part now which is cos a sine b this part is divided by cos a cos b all over So in the numerator, that's the division for the numerator. Now we're gonna look at the division for the denominator. The division for the denominator will be cos A cos B over cos A cos B. Nice. And then of course, we have a minus, a sine A sine B over a cos A, cos B. When you do that division now, what are we gonna get? Let's work it out now. As we can clearly see right here, cos B cancels a cos B, cos A cancels a cos A, cos AB cancels cos AB. And now what you get is sine A over cos A is tan A, so that's how you get tan A. 
right there plus sine b over cos b is tan b so that's why you get a tan b right there then this is all being divided by this part cancel each other to just get one then you get minus sine a over cos a is tan a and sine b over cos b is tan b so that's how you get tan a tan b nice and easy soft nice that takes care of this part two part two says given that sine a is 3 over 5, where A is acute and angle B is obtuse. Find an expression for tan A plus B. I would just go ahead and work it out, but because them say obtuse, they throw me off. So I, I have to put a, like a little diagram right here. And I'm gonna just put a triangle in the second quadrant. You have the angle B, and they say cos B is minus 1 over 2, so it says minus 1 because it's in the second quadrant. The hypotenuse is 2, and so we need to find this length. This length will be 2 square, 2 square minus 2 square minus minus 1 square, square rooted. And so this is the square root of three. All right. That is for this triangle. That's for the triangle with B. All right. All right. Now, the one in, in the first quadrant, no need to check. Let us tell us that we have a triangle. Hypotenuse is five. Opposite is three. So adjacent is four. Angle is A. So we have a two triangle them now. And express tan A plus tan B in this form. Now, first thing is we're gonna write down the formula. Tan A plus tan B. We we'll just prove it a while ago that it's tan A plus tan B over one minus tan A tan B. So tan A plus tan B is equal to tan A plus tan B tan A plus tan B over one minus tan A tan B over one minus tan A tan B. Nice and easy, soft. So now one minus that, so let's go ahead. Tan A now, looking in this triangle, tan A is going to be ad opposite over adjacent. So tan A is three over four. Plus tan B, tan B is opposite root three over adjacent. So it's plus minus root three. over one minus tan a tan b so it's over one minus tan a times tan b is root one minus root three over four and they want it in this form oh gosh we're gonna have to rationalize <coughs> so they're giving us a module one concept in module two so we're gonna have to rationalize so one minus this first and foremost, I'm just gonna write it as, I'm gonna join it as one. Instead of saying one minus that, I'm going to say four minus three root three over four. All right, and I'm gonna simplify the numerator I can simplify the numerator as three plus, or three minus four root three over four. I'm gonna simplify the numerator as 
3 minus 4 root 3 over 4. Simplifying it, joining it as one fraction. All over 4. Now, how does this simplify now? If we have a fraction divided by a fraction, just writing it down, if I have a fraction A over B and it's being divided by a fraction C over D, it's really multiplied. Instead of dividing by C over D, it's multiplied by D over C. So it's going to be this times this over this was four. So all of this is going to be simplified to be A times D. So it's going to be four times this. Four times three is 12 minus four times four is 16. It's four minus 16 root three over this times this, which is 16 minus 12 root 3. So now I'm going to have to rationalize. Now I'm going to have to rationalize and multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. But before I do that, I think I can simplify this. I can factor out 4. I can factor out 4. Because this is a big number, I can factor out 4. And instead of writing 12, Factor out four to get three minus four root three. Factor out the four, put the four right here. And then the same thing in the denominator, I can factor out four. Don't wanna be working with such big numbers. I'm going to factor out 4 out here as well. I'm going to have 4 minus 3 root 3. These 4s apparently cancel. So all I need to do is multiply by 4 plus 3 root 3. So I'm going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 4 plus 3 root 3. divided by 4 plus 3 root 3. So when I multiply them across, what I'm going to be getting is 3 times 4, that's 12. This times this is 3, that's 9, that's 9 root 3. And this will be minus 16 root 3. So 9 root 3 minus 16 root 3 is minus 7 root 3. And then I have minus 4 times minus 3 is minus 12. And root 3 times root 3 is 3. That's minus 36. Divided by, this is now the difference of 2 squared, which is 3 root 3 times 3 root 3. That's 27. And 4 squared is 16. So 16 minus 27 is minus 11. So in the denominator of negative 11. So now to express it in the form that they want, it's going to be 12 minus 36. 12 minus 36 is negative 24 over negative 11 minus 7 root 3 over negative 11. And since minus and minus, I can just put plus. So it's plus 7 root 3 over 11. That's how we get this question. Nice and easy soft. Next part. It says solve this equation. 
Solve this equation, sine square theta minus two cos square theta plus three cos theta plus five equals zero. To solve this equation, we have to change sine square to one minus cos square. So sine square theta is really one minus cos square. So change sine square to one minus cos square theta plus So we have one minus cos square theta minus two cos square theta. So one minus one minus cos square minus two cos square really becomes one minus three cos square theta plus three cos theta plus five equals zero. Good. All right, that's what we have. So now we're gonna bring everything to the other side. One plus five is six. Bringing it over, we're gonna get three cos square theta. I know you see minus sign there, but I'm gonna bring everything over to the other side to get three cos square theta minus three cos theta, because I divide you by negative one or bring it to the other side, any way you want to look at it. And then one plus five is six, so it's gonna become minus six. All I did was divide two by negative one equals zero. So let me put what I did to get the positive three. I divided through by negative one. Now after I divide through by negative one, I'm gonna do another division. I'm gonna divide through by three. So now I'm gonna divide through by three to get cos square theta. I divide through by three, I get cos square theta minus cos theta minus two is equal to zero. All right, now, can this be factorized? Can it be factorized? I'm just gonna go straight to quadratic formula. When it looks a little different, to, well, it can be factorized. It's just, it's just factorize it. It can be factorized. Let me see now. Signs are different, the greater product negative. So it has to be two and a one minus is associated here and plus is associated here this must be cos theta and this part is cos theta nice and so now really and truly this part won't have any solution and so therefore we only need to look at the part that is gonna give us that cos theta is minus one. Because this part won't be giving us any solution. We don't need to check that that part has no solution because cos theta can't equal to. So cos theta being equal to negative one, we draw our circle and we want where cos is negative. Cos is positive. C A S D cos is positive here and here. So we want the solution in the second and third quadrant. So first we find out the principal acute angle, which is cos inverse of one, cos inverse of one. When you find cos inverse of one, that will give you the principal acute angle. Cos inverse of one is zero. And so the angle over here is pi minus zero, which is pi, and the angle here is pi plus zero, which is also pi. All right, the cos of, cos of pi is minus one, yes. But look at this, it says it wants theta to be between zero and four, four pi. So it can go around the circle four times. So what we're gonna get then is theta can be equal to pi. Going around the circle one more time, you can also get theta is two pi 
That makes sense. Theta can be two pi. Two pi. No, two pi would be associated here. Pi plus two pi is three pi. My apologies. Pi plus two pi is three pi. Two pi plus pi, yes, that's three pi. So theta can be pi or theta can be three pi. All right, that's by going around the circle one more time. So for those who don't understand how we get the three pi, we went around the circle one more time. So that gives us three pi. That's how we got the three pi. So pi and three pi are the solutions. Nice, good. All right, next part of the question, it says, f of theta is equal to six cos theta plus eight sine theta, express it in the r sine form. So first we need to find out what is r. r is equal to a square, which is six square, plus eight square, square rooted, six square plus eight square, square rooted, and then we square root that, we're getting 10, that's gonna be R. Then alpha is tan inverse B over A. So alpha is equal to tan inverse A over six. Alpha is equal to tan inverse A over six. Alpha is tan inverse eight over six, so eight divided by six. We find tan inverse of that at 0 0.927. 0 0.927, that's alpha, 0 0.927. All right, now that we have that for alpha, now we can express f of f of theta in that form. So it's gonna now be f of theta, f of theta is now equal to 10 sine, it's equal to 10 sine theta plus alpha. So it's 10 sine theta plus 0 0.927. Nice and easy, soft. Now that we finish this question, moving right along, part two. Part two say, hence or otherwise, find the general solution of f of two, f of theta equal to. Hence mean you set this equation equal to two. So we're going to set 10 times the sine of theta plus 0 0.927. Come on, give me the dot, 0 0.927. We're gonna set this equal to two. So setting this equal to two, first thing we do is divide through by 10. Dividing through by 10, we're gonna get the sine of theta plus 0 0.927. is equal to two over 10, and two over 10 is really one over five, because I divided through by 10. So now, what you're gonna do is, remember one general solution, all right? So first thing you do is find sine inverse of this. So you're getting that theta plus zero point, zero point nine two seven, it's equal to sine inverse of one over five. All right, and so what would be the general solution? So in you're gonna get that. So if you wanted to write a general solution for theta, let's do it now general solution.
general solution. So the general solution, as you know, there's going to be two values, two values. So the general solution is going to be theta is equal to sine inverse of this minus this so general solution is theta is sine inverse of one over five plus 0 0.927 plus two n pi. I can go around the circle again, so plus two n pi. That's one possible answer. Another possible answer is going to be pi minus all of this. Wait, when you bring it over, it becomes minus. So this shouldn't be plus, this should be minus. Sine inverse one over five minus. Then another possible answer will be pi minus sine inverse of this. So it's pi minus sine inverse of one over five. minus 0 0.927. Need to put a bracket to show that you work out the pi minus this first, plus two n pi. That's the general solution. Many persons may want to write like an actual number. So I don't know, depending on how you feel, maybe you like to write actual numbers. So you can go ahead and say sine inverse one over five minus 0 0.927 and you get negative something. So you have theta is negative. So maybe you feel good by writing down here. I don't know, it does depend on you. Some persons might feel prefer better to write minus 0 0.7 two five plus two plus two n pi and some persons might feel better to write or pi minus that now which is pi minus sine inverse one over five minus zero point nine two seven some persons might feel better in writing two point 0, 0.013 plus 2n pi, depending on how you prefer write your answer. All right, so those are also possible solutions for theta. It's the same thing, this and this is the same thing. All I did was put the numbers there. All right, so any way you prefer to write it, you're fine. I prefer to leave it this way, exact. Okay. Moving right along. We reach 